On today's episode, we're taking you to the Cooper River in South Carolina. A river that has produced prehistoric bones and artifacts for scuba divers for decades. Giant shark teeth, mammoth bones, and a new species of prehistoric creature I discovered while diving the river in 2009. The river is full of life, death, and treasure for those brave enough to explore the black water. I'm Rick Jaco. Join us for this next episode of The Bone Hunters. Andy and I usually do our treasure hunting on our own, but this season we've added a new member to the team, Roxy the dog. Come on over here, Roxy. Roxy has a special talent. She has what we call a gator locator attached to the end of her snout. The gator locator lets me know if any of these animals are in the area before I dive. We've got our gear loaded. Let's go hunt some fossils. We're headed out Durham Creek to our first dive destination, the Red Banks. While we're cruising, let's talk a little about what makes the Cooper River such a great spot for fossils and artifacts. The city of Charleston, South Carolina was founded in 1680 by English colonists and African slaves. By the 18th century, rice had become the major exported commodity. Rice plantations lined the Cooper River and were big business from colonial times till the Civil War. The remains of these plantations can still be seen today as you boat along the river. In 1861, Charleston Harbor was witness to the beginning of the Civil War. When diving the Cooper, you will find artifacts dating back to the colonial times. Hand-blown black glass bottles, pipes, slave tags, cannonballs, and much more. We also find evidence of the Native Americans that inhabited the shores of the Cooper. Spear points, pottery, and other artifacts are commonly found by divers. We've arrived at our dive destination, the Red Banks. This is a hot spot for divers. The bone beds here are extensive at a depth of 35 to 55 feet. I've got to get geared up. While I'm doing that, let's talk a little about the fossils that are found in the Cooper. The Cooper cuts into the geologic layers of the Hawthorne Formation, which spans four epochs, the Oligocene, the Pliocene, the Miocene, and the Pleistocene. 
The Pleistocene 1.8 million to 10,000 years ago contains the remains of many Ice Age mammals, reptiles, and marine life. The Cooper River is best known for the fossilized teeth of the largest ocean predator ever known, the sea megalodon shark. The megalodon size has been debated by scientists for years with estimates anywhere from 35 to 80 feet in length. The megalodon lived approximately 23 to 1.8 million years ago during the Miocene and Pliocene epochs. When I dive the Cooper River I'm diving solo. Sandy is on the boat and could get me out of the river if needed. I choose to keep myself anchored to the boat. I use a series of ropes tied to the boat and a kayak. I have a 10 pound anchor I keep with me while searching the river bottom. I have approximately a 300 foot radius I can work around the boat during the dive. This allows me to cover a lot of ground while diving and still be in contact with the boat at all times. At the end of the dive I follow the anchor line to the surface and back to the boat. This method also allows me to conduct a controlled safety stop on my way to the surface. With the boat anchored and me on the river bottom, Sandy gets some peace and quiet, and time to enjoy the other things the Cooper River has to offer. My dive is just about done. When I get back on board, I'm going to take you to the spot where I discovered a new species of prehistoric creature back in 2009. In September 2009, I was diving the Cooper with John Sir Copley and his boat, the Surface Interval. It was during that trip that I found an unusual fossil skull cap on the river bottom. This is a cast of the original fossil. This is a new species of Serenian from the Eocene epoch that I found here at this site right below the T in the Cooper River. I had three casts made. One is in the collection at the State Museum in Columbia, South Carolina and I have one and I sent one to Richard Hulbert in Florida at the University of Florida. The original fossils in the permanent collection at the Smithsonian where it should be. These are some photos I took of the skull cap soon after it was found. It was identified by Dr. Daryl Domning as a new genus and species of proto fossil from the Eocene epoch. This animal is a prehistoric relative of the modern day manatee and its older cousin the dugong. In almost 200 dives in the Cooper River and other fossil bearing rivers in the southeast, this is my favorite treasure to date. I need to get in a surface interval after my dive. We'll grab some lunch and cruise the river to see what we can find. I think I'll let the boat pick the next dive site.
After a nice cruise on the river, we've ended up at one of my favorite fossil and artifact sites, Bono Ferry. This is the first site Sandy dove the Cooper River with me a few years ago, and where we filmed the first episode of The Bone Hunters. Well, this is, we're at Bono Ferry now. This is the first place you dove, Sandy, in the Cooper River. Do you remember diving with me here? I do. With the gators? I remember holding on for dear life. Yeah, but you found some neat stuff. Yeah, I found a lot of bricks that you had to carry. I'd like to jump back in there right now. Well, I know, because the current is slack right now because of the tide. It's perfect time right now. While Sandy and I were reminiscing about past dives and the artifacts and fossils we had found at Bono Ferry, Roxy began to alert on something, and it didn't take long for us to figure out what it was. That's a big boy. He's out getting him a tan. I can't tell if that's Wally or Willie. Nope. That's a... Damn, that's a big sucker too. <laughs> he didn't like our company, so he's heading out. After seeing a 12-foot gator paddling around in the river in the area I wanted to dive, I decided to call it a day. Besides, I want to get back to the hotel and clean up my finds from my earlier dive. On the way back, Roxy alerted on something else out in the marsh. This fellow wasn't as lucky as the last gator we saw. This one was probably hit by a boat or shot by a hunter that couldn't retrieve him in the rice marsh. A sad thing to see on the Cooper River. It's time to head back to the boat ramp and get our boat and our gear unloaded. Later tonight when we get to the hotel, we'll see what I found on my earlier dive. Back at the hotel, it's first things first. Roxy gets a chicken dinner reward for alerting on the gators today and keeping me from becoming gator bait. Well, I didn't find any rare fossils today, just the usual stuff you'd expect to find in the Cooper River. Got a couple of decent whale ears, inner ear bones from a whale. Got two or three of those, piece of tortoise shell, giant land tortoise shell that's falling apart. I got some dugong rib bone. These are pretty common in the Cooper River. Uh, you can expect to find a lot of this. Most people don't even pick them up. Some decent shark teeth, none of them big megalodons like we're looking for, but some pretty good makos. Decent mako teeth. There's a nice one. So I didn't do too bad. Yeah, you can't find a new species every time you go out, but you can usually find something pretty cool. Never had a bad dive in the Cooper River. We've got our gear packed and it's time to head home. We had a great time on the Cooper today and we hope you enjoyed the trip also. We'll see you on the next episode of The Bone Hunters. <laughs>